Hello and welcome to Bite Size MRCP, a manageable way to digest the things that you need to know for your MRCP exam. We are two junior doctors based in the UK who have passed all three parts of the MRCP within the last five years and want to help you do the same. We're not associated with any MRCP examination organizations and the materials covered are by no means an exhaustive list of what can come up in your exam and indeed are not intended to be used as medical advice. Please refer to your college of entry or your friendly supervisor for further questions regarding the exam syllabus. If you like the sound of what you hear today and would like to join us for more bite-sized revision, give us a thumbs up and press the subscribe button. Now, without further ado, let's get into t today's topic which is on giant cell arthritis under the section of rheumatology. So to start with, we're going to cover the definition of um, giant cell arthritis or GCA for short. It's the commonest type of vasculitis in people um, older than 50. And as you recall from our previous uh, lecture, which was on an overview of uh, vasculitis, it's um, a type of large vessel vasculitis. As is for epidemiology, it has a mean age of um, about 70 years old. And it's, as I mentioned, really rare uh, below the age of 50. It's more common in uh, Caucasians and it's more common in females with a ratio of 3 to 1 over men. As for its symptoms, um, it's one of those conditions that you really need to be familiar with and comfortable with, not only for your MRCP exam, but also for um, real clinical practice. Um, regardless of the specialty that you do, um, given that it's uh, uh, really common in any of the acute medical take as a potential case. Uh, so for its symptoms, uh, it's usually a sudden onset headache, usually unilateral, however, it can be bilateral, and it's associated with scalp tenderness. Patient in a classic MCQ question will be uh, describing or reporting pain on combing their hair um, and it can not too infrequently have some visual impairments and symptoms and those are normally seen as type of amaurosis fugax or diplopia. The other key feature is jaw claudication and pain on chewing. It can also present with constitutional symptoms such as weight loss, fever and anorexia. And in those circumstances, it would be very important for you to consider uh, other causes of large vessel vasculitides. Um, and in one of our future lectures, we will, we will be talking about a condition called uh, PMR or polymyalgia rheumatica, uh, which is uh, known as a spectrum of GCA. So, for examination findings in a patient who has got um, signs and symptoms concerning with uh, GCA, you would frequently find scalp tenderness, um, you would find a reduced temporal artery pulse, you can find thickened temporal arteries, and you can also very importantly need to demonstrate that you're examining for visual field um, uh, defects. Uh, as well as any uh, upper cranial nerve pulses. Um, as I mentioned, it can be a uh, um, GCA can sometimes present as a spectrum uh, with PMR. Therefore, it would be prudent to examine for proximal joint stiffness. Um, and also considering that this is a type of large vessel arthritis, it would be important to check for patient blood pressure. As for the investigation that you would want to do, try to have a systematic approach towards this. This is particularly important for your PACES examinations. So to start with bedside tests, and that would be uh, to check blood pressure, uh, both to find out whether the patient is having a very high um, 
blood pressure as a result of their vasculitis or not and also you would want to check for a right and left uh, BP in the arms and whether there, there is any difference or not which might indicate uh, other uh, types of vasculitis such as Takayasu. You would want to definitely check for a urine dip, specifically looking for hematuria if you're thinking about potential renal artery involvement. Um, the blood test that you would want for a patient who um, is um, suspecting of GCA would be uh, your inflammatory markers, particularly ESR and CRP. Um, you would want to do a full blood count and renal function uh, and an ANCA screen. Uh, these are particularly important if you're thinking about uh, other causes of uh, vasculitis. And you would certainly want the patient to have a proper eye examinations. In real clinical practice, this is ideally done uh, with the help of your colleagues in ophthalmology. However, in the cases of MRCP exam and also particularly in the um, cases of PACES, it wouldn't be too unusual um, to be expected to uh, examine the eye yourself. Later on, uh, you would want to book in the patient for a temporal artery ultrasound. Uh, if this is positive, um, a classical textbook definition that could come up in your MCQ is a sign called halo sign, uh, which would be suggestive of a diagnosis of GCA. The gold standard diagnosis, however, is done through temporal artery biopsy. Uh, on the biopsy, you will find granulomatosis inflammation of inner media, um, as well as multinucleated giant cells, fragmentation of internal elastic lamina. In real life, this is not done all the time, and it sometimes depends on the center and also the consultant who is seeing the patient. The problem with temporal artery biopsy, some of you might know, is that um, it very much depends on which part of the temporal artery you are biopsying. And if you are unlucky to get the part that doesn't have that classical finding or histological changes yet, you will be getting a negative result, which is called a skip lesion. Therefore, you could potentially be missing a true case of GCA um, because your, your temporal artery biopsy has been negative. As such, it's really important that you consider other parts of the case in order to make a diagnosis of GCA. And that is patient's signs and symptoms, which is first and foremost, later on by um, your rise in inflammatory markers. You could also consider PET scanning or MRI scanning, especially if you are suspecting um, other a large vessel vasculitis as part of your GCA. However, this is probably um, beyond the scope of MRCP. Complications of GCAs are divided into two groups. Broadly speaking, it's early complications, which is um, one of the ones that most people are fearful of, is um, the threat to the vision. Uh, it can uh, lead to permanent visual loss uh, if GCA is not picked up or undiagnosed. As for its late complication, it could potentially lead into other large vessel um, involvement. Um, and as a result of that, it could also uh, affect the cardiac um, arteries um, and result in conditions such as aortic aneurysm and dissection. Treatment of GCA is something that is very much expected from uh, anyone who's sitting MRCP to be comfortable with. Um, so again, starting in a systematic manner, um, first and foremost, you would want to treat the patient's blood pressure. Um, and that would be quite important if you are especially suspecting other causes of large vessel vasculitis. Um, in order to 
uh, preserve um, ocular involvement of the GCA and preserve the site. Uh, if you're suspecting somebody uh, with GCA who does not have any visual involvement yet, you would be starting them on 40 to 60 milligram of prednisolone and then sending a referral to the rheumatology team. However, importantly, if your patient is unfortunate enough to present to you with query GCA and already has got visual loss or any visual involvement, it would be important that this patient is managed as an inpatient uh, and they need to be admitted for pulsed IV methylprednisolone. This would be crucial for you to know, especially if you are uh, discussing the management of a patient with potential GCA in your um, PACES examinations. Later on, if um, corticosteroid is contraindicated or um, if you're looking for particularly a, a steroid sparing agents, you could consider uh, metotrexate. And in refractory cases of GCA, uh, tocilizumab has recently been um, licensed um, to be used. However, those would be very much directed by your secondary and tertiary um, care colleagues, especially with the help of a rheumatologist. In order to make a thorough assessment, if this was a case in your paces, it would be important to be thinking about the potential side effects of steroid and therefore prescribing um, other medications to um, combat those. These would include um, a choice of PPI such as omeprazole, bone protection for patients who are on long-term steroids and that would usually be a choice of calcium and vitamin D um, with bisphosphonate and you can also consider DEXA scanning if the patient has particular risk factors or previous fractures um, before putting them on steroids. Okay, let's do some questions. So we have a 70 year old gentleman presenting with a four week history of gradually worsening left sided headache. Over the last two days, he has noted blaring and gradual loss of color vision. On examination, you note a thickened appearance and texture of the frontal branch of the left temporal artery, which is exquisitely tender on examination. He's struggling to count numbers of fingers. What should be your, in your initial treatment? The options that's been given is A, IV antibiotic, B, IV acyclovir, C, 60 milligram of oral prednisolone, D, 500 milligram of IV methylprednisolone, and E, methotrexate. So if you recall this case, you will realize that this is classical de description of somebody who could potentially present you as GCA. You have got an elderly gentleman who is presenting with headache and visual and, and visual problems it would be really important for you to differentiate that because this gentleman is already unfortunately having visual signs and involvement uh, the, the um, appropriate choice of treatment would be hospital admission in order to be pulsed with IV methylprednisolone therefore option D or choice 4 is the correct option in here Question two is which of the following is true regarding GCA? One, a negative temporal artery biopsy exclude a diagnosis of GCA. Two, GCA is commonly diagnosed in people below the age of 50 years. Three, there is a poor cor correlation between levels of CRP and a diagnosis of GCA. Four, Metotrexate may be considered as a steroid sparing agent for the treatment of GCA. And five, it is highly unlikely for GCA to present with constitutional symptoms. So let's go through these one by one. Option one is saying that a negative temporal artery biopsy excludes a diagnosis of GCA. As you recall, um, I mentioned earlier that although a temporal artery biopsy is technically the gold standard for diagnosis. 
one of the not too infrequently problems that we see on a daily basis is that these biopsy results are coming back as negative. And the reason is that if your um, um, surgeon or radiologist, depending on whoever does the biopsy, is not um, getting that exact point that has the inflammation around the artery, unfortunately, you're going to have what we call as a skip lesion. So you're not going to be seeing um, those um, classical um, histological GCA finding. Of course, this does not mean that the patient does not have GCA. And therefore, option one is incorrect. Cool, um, two is GCA is commonly diagnosed in people below the age of 50. Uh, we did talk about this, that GCA is uh, commonly a disease of the elderly and is rarely seen in patients below the age of 50. So this is going to be incorrect. Three is there is a poor correlation between levels of CRP and diagnosis of GCA. Um, you would remember um, that I mentioned both of your inflammatory markers, as in both CRP and ESR, are really quite important in diagnosis of GCA. And there is uh, a good correlation between how active your GCA is uh, and how um, high your inflammatory markers are. Therefore, this option is going to be incorrect. Four is methotrexate may be considered as a steroid, as a steroid sparing agent for the treatment of GCA. Uh, we do know that this is correct, um, and um, it is not too infrequently used in patients who have uh, struggle uh, with taking steroid uh, or have um, potential side effects of those. And finally, is that it's highly unlikely for GCA to present with con uh, constitutional symptoms. And we know that this is incorrect, um, given the fact that uh, it can present as a spectrum of polymyalgica rheumatica uh, or PMR um, and um, also other types of large vessel vasculitides. So having um, constitutional symptoms such as a fever, um, weight loss or anorexia is not um, highly unlikely. Therefore, the correct option or the true statement is going to be option four. If you like what you heard today, give us a thumbs up and hit the like and subscribe button below to make sure you don't miss out on our next episode. Let us know in the comments which topics you would like to hear in the future. See you in the next episode.